Welcome to the Just Five Things podcast. Today's episode is all about why. Why just five things? My life had got a little bit into a rut, but purposefully so. From having a successful business that was about to expand to New York and the UAE, my mother unexpectedly passed away one morning when she didn't wake up. So, deciding that I was going to make her death my priority job, as she'd always sacrificed so much for me and it was just me and her, I shut down the company and I focused on just that and prioritising my grief. 18 months have passed and I had no responsibilities, which is exactly what I'd hoped for. I didn't have freelancers or employees getting in touch with me around the clock needing me and I was able to learn what I needed for me. But then I'd started to get into a slight rut. I wanted more and I wasn't taking action. I know I'm capable of more. I knew I was. But the thought of trying to find that energy and that drive that I used to have as an entrepreneur, I didn't think I could find it. And then, well, then the unexpected happened and I got given a gift. And I want to share it with you because presents are meant to be given. I didn't have to think of the bigger picture. I didn't have to build it in a day like I used to. I could just take my gentle ass time. I didn't have to run around like a headless chicken and try and win every race on the same day as competing in five. I could just do a little bit each day and prioritize me and my mind. And that's how I found. Well, I say that technically they found me. (laughs) Just five things. Hello, this is Rhoda Portmandel here, and I'm going to fill you guys in on all things Just Five Things. So, I thought I'd give you a little intro. I had no idea I would be doing anything like this, well, over a month ago, to be perfectly honest. (laughs) My life looked very different, and then a few things occurred and a challenge got set. I recently caught COVID on Christmas Day and now recently living by myself, I had to self-isolate for 10 days. I'm actually very good at being by myself. I'm very good with um, finding things to do and kind of lighting myself up. Um, So it hasn't really bothered me in the past and being brought up as quintessentially an only child, even though I have half brothers and sisters, I it's not phased me. Anywho, got a bit different when I got the COVID. I was fine with it. I had a really incredible experience with COVID. It really reset me, it reset my whole body, my energy. I honoured the healing process, ate healthily, took everything natural, and it's just boosted me to a whole new level. But that being said, it got to the point where my body was ready to go out and get fresh air and start easing itself back into daily routines and I couldn't let it and the last two days there was this huge struggle where my soul calling was I need to get outside I feel better again I you've honored me and rested now please you know I've done everything you needed me to do I've got through this illness please can you now honor me and let me get back out there and start getting excited about life again and I couldn't I couldn't And it was a really silly thing that tipped me over and it was the craving, this craving over three days on and off for a packet of salt. No, it wasn't salt. Sorry, it was cheese and onion crisps. Hmm, cheese and onion crisps. Now, I now have a very good intuitive relationship with my body when it comes to food. I haven't for many, many years. Um, Very sad learnt patterns from family members that were quite damaging. Um, And I have worked so hard and consistently on breaking those patterns and creating them with new ones. So the fact that my body was kindly asking for this, and I was like, hey, hey, love, sorry, can't do it. It started to create this really horrible tug of war that actually became a war within myself. My body was screaming, oh, this packet of crisps just wanted to be honoured and 
it wanted to be heard. And actually, that was very similar to years ago when my parents split up. My body would be so angry trying to process things and I pushed them away. So it would come up through, oh, I just need to eat or, oh my gosh, give me this, this and this. And I was really trying to control it to control the pain. Whereas rather than see that there's wisdom in that pain, trying to have a conversation with you. Um, so it became really harrowing. And one night before I went to bed, I started to feel really low because I didn't know how else to let my body know I wasn't punishing it. Um, we just couldn't, we just couldn't do something as simple as <laughs> eat a packet of crisps, go out to the shop and get it. And my whole mood started to spiral because I'd been having this tug of war, tug of war with myself. There hadn't been any dopamine hits. There hadn't, my serotonin was being suppressed and I was getting ready to go to bed and I felt suicidal. I wasn't going to do anything at all because I'm I'm so happy and upbeat and even when pain occurs or trauma in life I see the wisdom because I've been through a lot of things which will come out at a later date. Um so it really saddened me. It really alarmed me that I hadn't felt this way for about 5 years because I've put so much work in um of just discovering what my body's instruction manual was that I'd been ignoring and it just got continuously worse so I thought right if I go to sleep I'll wake up I'll be fine and I woke up and I was feeling considerably more so I can't do this I can't do this <laughs> and it got to about 6 7 p.m that evening and I had to message I think I messaged about eight of my friends saying um I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I'm feeling horrific. Um, I'm having really awful suicidal feelings. I'm not going to do anything, but I just kind of need to know that people know that this is being acknowledged at this time. What was interesting is only three friends got back to me over the space of 24 hours. One of them was on a different time zone. So she's like, oh my God, oh my God, this time I was asleep ringing me, ringing me. The reason I didn't see this, I hadn't seen my phone, I hadn't seen my phone. I'm like, no, it's cool. Um, Luckily, a friend from Canada picked up the message really quickly and she's just like, talk me through it. I'm really sorry you're going through this. And I said, it's not, it's, it's not having your own control or will um, about not being able to go out and being locked in. And this natural thing of just needing some fresh air. Well, the night before, this was happening the night before I was coming out of isolation and I hadn't had any symptoms for days. So I actually put my mask on and went out for a walk because I didn't see another human soul. But I thought I have to try and do something here to shift this. Otherwise I could get stuck and spiral. Whereas actually when I come out of isolation and out of COVID, I want to come out like a phoenix from the ashes with this new energetic kick to you know take action in these areas of my life that I haven't for quite some time or haven't at all that really helped um another thing that was concerning is the few friends who didn't get back to me it's because they're like hey you know you're always okay I never worry about you even when things get tough I know you're going to be okay and and I don't think that's a phrase that I want to hear anymore and I don't think any other people should hear that anymore anyway so just putting that out there as friend advice to people <laughs> So I went to bed that last night knowing I could leave my house properly the following day and get those crisps. And um, and it was crazy. I was going to bed. And I am very spiritual by accident, I'll say. <laughs> kind of a, because of things that I've been through, it found me. I haven't been on a quest to find it. Um and I was falling asleep and I was like, right, what about, what about people in the world who feel this every single day? What about where I was years ago, people who are there now? What did I need back then? What could have helped? What about those people who have been feeling this since February 2020 and it's getting worse? What about those people who live by themselves and don't see anyone and it actually affects them? They need to be around people. And um, the phrase I put out there is, what can I do 
for the greater good at this time to help those people. And I just heard this voice within say, do five things a day. I was like, what? Just do five things a day. And I was like, just do five things a day. Right. And then I heard the next phrase for 365 days. I was like, just do five things a day for 365 days. Now, the irony is the one thing that my whole life has not stuck in my head. And I mean, I've been to school and uni and everything is how many days are in a year. So I was like, 365 days a year? Is that just over? Like, that's random. Because it's a year like, oh, the in dialogue. <laughs> it's like, how long is a year? So the other phrase I heard is, call it just five things to yourself. Because if it's just five things, it feels like it's not a lot of things to do. If it's, I have five things I have to do, it feels very concrete. And if you can't meet each one fully, you will start to get down on yourself. And that's not the, that's not the point of this. The point is to create a steady compound effect as the days passed on things that you need to do. But the majority of those things are for self-care those things that you put off, that time and space that you need for yourself to reset, that you start to not prioritize because you naturally prioritize other people. That's what a lot of human beings do, right? And also to do things that take you one step further to a place where you want to be. So when we get stuck or down in something, it's because we're not taking action. It's because our our mood starts to go down because our soul and our body and our instinct is trying to tell us, hey, we don't want to be here. The energy we want is over there. Please can we go follow the energy and our heads get so caught up in it. So I thought, what if I just do five things and document it? So I started with Instagram and it was funny because people started to come back to me being like, hey, I've started to do just five things. Somebody else was like, I'm starting with three because, you know, I've got a lot on in my life right now. So I'm starting with three things I want to do a day. And then I thought, oh my goodness. Then I decided to put a video on YouTube on a book I'd reviewed, was reading, that people were asking about on Instagram in my Just Five Things. And like people were watching it. And I'm like, (laughs) huh? Commenting and sharing it. So I was like, okay, let's do this. And then the biggest blast was putting it on Facebook. I have a massive issue with Facebook. It's a trauma of mine. When I was in this really bad phase years ago, like, just because stuff I'd been through and I couldn't get my head around it and I could only see the pain and not the gift from it. Um, Facebook was really a struggle for me because in my 20s I'd been in several car crashes and my life was not that of someone in their 20s and my school friends were there having the time of their lives by the looks of things, going out and partying, you know, getting that house, buying that car, going on these incredible holidays and I was struggling (laughs) struggling to just get out of bed and convincing my nervous system um, to control my arm, to bring it up to my face just so I could brush my teeth. Like those struggles took 20 minutes at times to just do a day without having a headache and my body whacking me back into bed. And even now when I go through Facebook, I get this anxiety feeling, which I'm going to work on um, because I keep thinking I'm going to see people from school who are achieving things and I feel I'm so behind in that race because of what happened all those years ago. The irony is I actually, I feel terrible. I deleted a lot of them because my then self couldn't handle it. So they're not popping up on my feed and I still get that anticipation and I feel so terrible because now quite a lot of them are coming back into my life and we're becoming gorgeous friends and I'm like, I'm really sorry I deleted. Because back then I wish I'd had just five things a day, you know, the confidence it builds. It gets to a point where there are things I've been putting off for years, but because you start doing these steps every day, you then have the natural desire to complete something that you'd put high up on a shelf because you didn't think you were could obtain it, you didn't think you had the confidence, you didn't think you were enough, you didn't think you deserved it. It's gorgeous. So Just Five Things podcast is going to be me interviewing people majority of the time, asking them five things that they've done to get from where they were to where they're going. Um, I want this to be as positive in sense as it can be, but also I want it to be as real as possible. 
You know, you need to talk about the downswings. We need to talk about the vulnerable moments. We need to drop our masks. That's where people are trying. I mean, we're getting better at it nowadays, but a lot of people try not to show that. And that's, you know, those those cave moments where we retreat, that's where we go into discovery mode. And although it can be painful when we look at our darkness and we have that dialogue with it, we actually find what it's trying to tell us. So there's that area. And also I want to share the resistance I've had and from myself for doing just five things, the resistance, the things that have come up within me that I've had to forgive memories of how I reacted to things in the past that have been stopping me from stepping forward in other areas because I didn't think I deserved it and how I've broken that down um and quite um, and a lot more quickly than I could have realized and I guess at the end of the day I would adore to write a book on this and kind of create a manual because you know I've I've been through a lot and I've always been very shielded of t- of showing it because I wanted people to see me in the victor status, not the victim status. But as I said to a friend the other day, like I don't see myself in the victim status. So no one else is going to, because that's not the way I portray it. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that have occurred such as, um, you know, family traumas, um, horrific family divorces. I'm currently parentless. Um, <laughs> death oh I've done it all grief of self um uh, when I was in a car crash the last one I got organ failure I was bed bound um my body it just ballooned to six stone in six months my whole body shut down I became chronically ill um I had ME I was told by doctors I would never I'd have it for the rest of my life and I never have another quality of life this was it and I just wasn't choosing to accept that I lost my singing voice and I was an actress see I wouldn't say I was an actress before it was was too scared actress and artist I didn't think I um I didn't think I had done enough to get that label it's ridiculous so all these things I've been through I it's just there was a lot of falling over and pulling myself back up a lot of physical pain I cannot describe the physical pain I have been through I never imagined I would be physically pain-free in my life and I now talk to people who are where I was you know, a decade ago or five years ago. And and I look at them and I'm like, gosh, I just, I see it. I see it as well in a human sense and a spiritual sense of what's going on. And I'm like, please, you know, try this. But people don't want to know <laughs> necessarily because sometimes we're stuck in our own stories of this has happened to me and I still need to talk about it. And that's absolutely understandable. But there comes a time where you have to give yourself permission to become unstuck from that story, take action and have a better quality of life. Like live, not fester. Live, not fester in feelings that happened 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. So I'm going to share as much as I can because I'm a great believer. Chronic illnesses, there's I'm I'm like chronic illness just it doesn't even come into my identity bag anymore and when I was told that was my identity I went not for me and um I just I really wish I could bottle up what I've learned and how I feel because this is the girl who couldn't get out of bed brain was foggy couldn't remember anything, was angry and lost in a fog, and body was in crippling pain. To now a woman who feels so empowered, sees so much wisdom in life, and doesn't hold anything against anyone, doesn't judge, and doesn't judge myself, and I'm starting to realise how I treat myself is now how I'm treating others, or how I'm reacting to others. And that that is the gift. There's no more tension in my system anymore. There's no more negativity or anxiety or horrible chat in my head. And I'm not quite sure where that turning point came, but I really hope I can discover it in doing this just five things and sharing it with people because I'd love to share that turning point. Because I think a lot of people are waiting to receive a turning point and they just don't know what it looks like. So I'm really looking forward to getting to know you guys over this trajectory. Uh, Not too sure what it's going to look like over the 
weeks, months, years, and step by step, piece by piece, collectively, we together find the way to live the quality of life that we always were brought up as children, believing that we could have, feeling that joy, and going on this process together to realize that even though we've probably forgotten that along the way, we still have access to it. And and it's time. It's totally time. And let's do this together. Well done, bravo. I'm so proud of you. You just made it to the end of episode one of Just Five Things. So you know what to do. If you've liked this, share, subscribe and head over to Instagram and follow me at at just Rhoda so you can get all latest updates. And remember, check in to the next episode. You might find exactly what you're looking for. And hey, maybe you can try just five things. <laughs>